Supporters of Brazil's right-wing former president, Jair Bolsonaro, stormed the country's Congress, Supreme Court, and presidential palace yesterday. It's drawn startling parallels to the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol two years ago. The rioters broke windows, started fires, hurled computers to the ground. More than 1,000 people have since been arrested. Protesters echoed baseless claims from Bolsonaro that the recent presidential election was stolen. They have been calling for military intervention to save the election for months. Authorities were able to clear the Capitol buildings by nightfall. The heads of Brazil's government have called the protests, quote, acts of terrorism. Oliver Stunkel is with us now. He teaches international relations at the Vargas Foundation in Sao Paulo. Oliver, thanks for being here. What did Brazilian authorities know leading up to this attack? Did they know that an attack was coming at all? Well, it certainly was very predictable, actually. Over the past years, basically since uh, the January 6 uh, attacks on the U.S. Capitol, analysts in Brazil have warned that something similar could happen if Bolsonaro loses the election, as it as happened in October last year. Uh, so there was a lot of expectation. Uh, so uh, this was largely predictable. Now, what's most uh, concerning is that uh, the armed forces and the military police uh, were apparently unprepared to uh, um, to protect the buildings. Uh, and now uh, we'll see the beginning of investigations about whether this was just sheer incompetence or possibly a connivance. I mean, a lot suggests that uh, given the pro-Bolsonaro sentiment and anti-democratic sentiment in the armed forces and the police, that the security uh, apparatus may have actually helped the protesters to attack the building yesterday in the Capitol. On that point, a Supreme Court judge has suspended the governor of the federal district where the attacks took place. Talk to us a bit more about the security failures that appeared to have taken place yesterday. Well, the uh, buildings, actually, Congress, uh, the Supreme Court, and the presidential palace were built to be very accessible. So whenever you're uh, in the Brazilian capital, it's easy to circulate and actually walk into Congress, uh, which makes them a bit more vulnerable. But uh, there have been uh, protesters in Brasilia for the past months uh, asking for a military coup, camping out in front of military headquarters. And they started walking yesterday for several miles towards Congress. So it, was, it would have been very easy to stop these people. Uh, so there were lots of signals. But for some reason, as they approached Congress, they began to attack the building, and there were not a uh, not sufficient amount of security personnel. However, there are images of some policemen uh, taking pictures together with uh, the attackers, which suggests that there may be some sympathy mm. between those as well. Oliver, Bolsonaro wasn't there during the attack. He's actually in Florida. Um, but these were his supporters. Uh, they were responding to his baseless claims. Um, what consequences will those arrested face? And might the former president face any consequences himself? Well, there's certainly calls for Bolsonaro to return home. A lot of people say that he is directly to blame. Uh, and he has certainly done nothing to reduce the tensions. He's embraced conspiracy theories about uh, you know, voter fraud without ever presenting concrete evidence. And a lot of people uh, believe that Lula is not the legitimate president and have been protesting as a consequence. Now, differently from Donald Trump, Bolsonaro has actually been very careful not to explicitly reject the result. He's been largely silent, and a lot of people uh, think that he has done that in order to avoid punishment from the electoral justice system. And he has left the country just before Lula's inauguration on January 1st. Uh, he's now in Florida. Uh, that may have been a strategy to uh, assure plausible deniability and say, I'm not to blame for what my supporters do. But there's very little doubt that he clearly played a key role in setting up the stage for these kinds of events. All right. Well, Oliver Stunkel, Oliver, thanks very much for sharing your insight and perspective with us. We appreciate it. Thank you very much.